Hi, this is Elle again. So continuing where we left off, left off about amniotic fluid and how it adds, uh, how amniotic fluid is added by the mother, which is which comprises of uh, eighty percent of the amniotic fluid, where the twenty percent comes from the child after the child swallows and digests the amniotic fluid. Now, um, there is a couple of pathologies associated with swallowing or with the inability to swallowing uh, or the inability to digesting or the inability to even passing it through the body that gives a certain number of pathologies and that is also very high yield on USMLE. Now first is the child has to be able to swallow. So we're gonna we're gonna make a different um, section for it. So if the child is unable to swallow, then there must be some sort of autonomic dysfunction. There must be some autonomic dysfunction with the reflex of swallowing. Now, this dysfunction has a name, and that name is Riley Day syndrome. Okay, it's also called familial dysautonomia. Usually, this is seen in Ashkenazi Jews, and this disease is autosomal recessive. Now, just to give you a rough idea, hmm, where do I stand? In terms of what other diseases do I see where there's Ashkenazi, Ashkenazi Jews involved? And I'll give you a moment to think about it. Right, you've guessed it right. So it's Tay Sachs, there is Neiman Pick, and there is um, Gaucher. These three diseases also has um, the whole association with Ashkenazi Jews. If you know any more, let me know. Uh, right at this very moment, I cannot recall if there is any more. I'm sure there is a lot more. I just can't recall right now. Now, that is the disease. So the Riley Day syndrome is the autonomic dysfunction, which gives the inability to swallow. As a result, what happens is all this fluid that's outside the fetus accumulates outside the fe fetus because it cannot go through the body and that pushes the child it kind of crushes the child a little bit from the outside um, and um, and it it creates polyhydramnios or when there is too much fluid because the mother is giving a proper amount of fluid is the child who cannot completely deal with the fluid so this gives an illusion of a problem of polyhydramnios or too much amniotic fluid. Now Riley Day syndrome is one of the disease association with polyhydramnios there is also other um, other clinical associations. Another one is Wardnick Hoffman and that is due to some some lower motor neuron dysfunction so the next one is Wardnick Hoffman. Sorry, I'm terrible in terms of typing, but I'm trying this. Uh, anyways, so Wardnick Hoffman is the lower motor neuron are affected. As a result, um, the child has that inability to swallow, or, or it's often um, associated with the term floppy baby okay they have a lot of common signs with polio like they look like kids who have polio but with polio they have to have a GI infection and polio does not just happen from the day you were born so there's a little bit differences here and there between polio and Wardenk Hoffman which I might just do a video separately on that later but this is from birth these babies are going to have lower motor neuron problem they will not be able to sit up they were not getting they're just going to be floppy babies so that is another disease association with polyhydromnias 
Wernicke Hoffman also causes uh, polyhydromnios. So that's two. There is two more. Or, you know, two more I want to mention at least. The other ones are any kind of atresia. So there could be esophageal atresia or duodenal atresia, which can also cause this whole obstruction. So this is very, very mechanical obstruction. These are due to mechanical obstruction of the GI, which does not let the, the amniotic fluid to pass, which does not allow the fetus to digest it, which does not allow the fetus to urinate the 20%. So it's just it's, it's a mecha me mechanical block rather than an autonomic block, which is the earlier ones that I mentioned. So these are these are all disease, associa disease associations which deals with polyhydromnias. Now, um, so if there is poly, there must be oligohydromnias, right? So the next one we're going to talk about is oligo. Now, this is this is the one where we are, it's very popular. I mean, I don't know anyone who doesn't know about uh, Potter syndrome or any, I mean, any medical student. It's very common, it's very easier to understand. It's just that fetus is unable to urinate into the amniotic sac, which causes very little amniotic fluid. And um, so the, the whole cushioning idea, the cushioning the fetus with the amniotic fluid doesn't happen properly. And there is, um, I mean, the fetus cannot add to that to that amniotic fluid that the mom is giving it, so there is less amniotic fluid. As a result, the fetus feels the pressure of gravity or, or of, of the mom's uterus just crushing it. As a result, they, they, they develop something called Potter's syndrome. And if we look, we'll see that Potter's syndrome is something which you can almost see that the baby has been crushed, the, may the baby has flat nose, the baby has frog legs because they were all crushed. Um, they also have um, renal problems, so that's another association you have to remember. Um, the, in Potter syndrome, the problem is in the kidneys where they are not able to add to the amniotic fluid, so it's um, it's just it gives a block, and the kidneys are kind of atrophied, and something is wrong with the kidneys, which doesn't allow them to urinate that amniotic fluid onto onto the onto the amniotic sac. So that is oligohydromnios. So that's about it in terms of poly and oligo. So so far, we have done the, physio the anatomy of um, GI. We have done some of the pathologies associated with it. So next, we're going to move on to, to, more, to more pathologies in, in, the, coming, in the coming videos. Thank you.